Morning and thank you for getting up with us on this Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. The time now is seven o'clock and this is a live look over downtown Portland. Coming up here, Oregon's vaccine plan is moving up the timeline. Millions of Oregonians are now set to be eligible in the coming weeks, but can the vaccine supply keep up? And we've got a new first hand view of a race through flames to save a life. First, though, our Chris McGinnis joins us live at home with the forecast first day of spring. Yeah, first day of spring and of course everything that we would expect in an early spring day, right? Some rain, some sun breaks, snow in the mountains. Let's take you live right now to the Oregon coast. A live look from Newport. We are just a few minutes away from sunrise, but you can see some raindrops on the camera lens there. And our camera bumping around in that south breeze just a little bit along the coast. It's a little breezy inland as well. We'll take you up to the mountain. There's a live look from ODOT. This is Highway 26 at Government Camp. Passes are seeing some snow. Ski resorts, of course, are seeing some good snow, we think, this weekend, with a snow level generally around 2,000 to 2,500 feet this morning. All right, radar, over the last three hours, showing some pretty good showers pushing out of Columbia and into northern Clark and Cowlitz County. We've had some on and off rain here in the metro area, Washington County, Yamhill County getting soaked, and uh, snow in the highest terrain of the coast range, but not impacting Coastal passes, of course, as they uh, remain rainy through the coastal passes. Cascade passes are a different story. It's 45 last check at PDX. Elsewhere across the region, 42 Beaverton and Hillsboro, 39, one of the cooler spots on this map at Timber Junction, and the cold spot right now, K Falls on this map, checking in with 30. All right, the plan for today, in and out of the clouds and the showers. Galen, I think the most numerous showers in the Portland area will be this morning before about noon or one o'clock and then we should start to see those diminish a bit with some sun breaks later today and highs in the lower 50s. More rain, steady rain back in the forecast tomorrow afternoon. I'll walk you through future casts, kind of breaking that down hour by hour in just a few minutes. All great information, Chris. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you. With President Joe Biden pushing states to make more people eligible for COVID-19 vaccines, Oregon is moving up its timeline again. On Monday, counties that have vaccinated most of their seniors can move to the next group, which is 45 and older with underlying conditions, along with frontline workers. Marion County is one that will make that move. Also Monday, seasonal and migrant workers who are already working are eligible. Then on March 29th, the rest of adults in Oregon 45 plus who have underlying health conditions can sign up for shots, along with those who are homeless and people in congregate living conditions. Now, the other change comes on April 19th. These people have been moved up frontline workers as defined by the CDC. They'll become eligible then. Now, the other big one is May 1st. That's when anyone in Oregon 16 and older will be eligible for the COVID vaccine. OHA director Patrick Allen said in the next two months, all those groups represent about 2 million people. As we've seen before, we know there will be temporary traffic jams as demand exceeds supply. We know it'll take a couple of weeks to get through the surge, but we can keep pace. If we receive approximately 250,000 or more first doses per week from the federal government starting in early April and continuing at that rate through the spring. So here's where we are now. Next week, Oregon will get roughly 192,000 doses. And Allen said he did not know if a significant increase would be happening in the next three weeks, but he's hopeful that will change. Governor Kate Brown is sharing her thoughts about a new guidance from the CDC, which now recommends three feet of space between desks in schools instead of six. This is welcome news for many school districts. After ODE and OHA update their guidance, School districts will still need to have conversations at the local level to update their plans for a return to in-person instruction. Now, six feet is still recommended between adults and students and during activities that increase transmission risk, like eating, singing, and sports. That's because the agency says this new recommendation only applies if everyone is wearing masks and other safety protocols are in place. The guidelines also vary depending on the rate of COVID infections in the community. Washington Governor Jay Inslee is expanding el vaccine eligibility there. Appointments open March 31st for anyone 60 and older, people living or working in a group setting, restaurant workers, and also people who have two or more medical conditions. Governor Inslee is also extending the statewide eviction moratorium to June 30th. Now, so far, for context here, 21% of people in Washington have received one vaccine dose. 
Portland is asking agencies to scale back this year because of the pandemic's impact on the budget and economy. And some firefighters say cuts could have serious consequences for you. Portland Fire and Rescue is considering cuts like saving $760,000 by eliminating six administrative positions. Most of those are vacant right now. Another $120,000 cut would decommission an old fireboat. But the biggest reduction of nearly $5.2 million would cut more than 40 positions and close one and a half stations. I've never seen a time in my 20 years where we have shown how important the frontline services are for the city of Portland. And I just think that this is not the time to cut. Now, Fire Chief Sarah Boone argues these cuts will disproportionately impact fire and medical services for BIPOC Portlanders. The union says the fire department should not have to make that choice. Firefighters hope the city uses federal aid to keep that from happening. We've got a lot more background and response from the city on KGW.com. We now have body cam video that shows what it took to save a woman from a house fire in the Fairview area. An officer was on patrol early Thursday morning when he heard about the fire over his radio. Ma'am, are you out? Where's he at? Where are you at? One, six, two. What? I'm out with a female victim. Uh, she's on the porch. She needs rescue. Mm. Now, the woman's husband was trapped inside there. You're hearing Officer Tim Taaka as he searched around the house to find him. But the smoke and flames were just too intense to go inside. That's when an off-duty Portland firefighter showed up. They found a ladder and were able to rescue the woman from the balcony. The firefighter went inside the house without any gear, trying to find that man. Unfortunately, the man did not survive. We don't know how this fire started. It took about 40 minutes to get it under control. We'll be right back.